Aiming is one of the key differences between deadlock and your run-of-the-mill MOBA. And the better you are at it, the better your results will be in-game. I mean, what's the point of having an additional item that gives you more DPS if you still can't hit your shots with it? So in this video, we're going to go over the many ways that you can improve your aim in-game, which will lead to direct improvements in your outgoing damage and, of course, your overall win rate. Let's dive into it. So while we will cover some routines and whatnot later in the video, I do want to make a few important distinctions that will make it a lot easier to start hitting shots inside of deadlock or well any third person shooter first it's no secret that deadlock is a third person shooter it's the first thing you see it takes about a second to realize that but not many understand how the bullets actually travel in a third person shooter and they don't adjust for it in most first person shooters the bullets will come out of the middle of the screen and then hit wherever your crosshair is pointing you might have a weapon on the screen and it might look like bullets are coming out of it but it's actually just being beamed from the middle of your screen right towards your target. When it comes to third person aiming, however, in most cases, the bullets do actually not go from the middle of your screen to your target. Hell, your crosshair isn't even completely centered. The bullets instead go from your character's weapon and travels in a straight line until it hits where your crosshair is pointing. And it's important to notice because this means that if you are right in front of an enemy at homey kissing distance, then you will still hit shots if you just overshoot them on the right, since the bullets will travel from your character towards the crosshair and just happen to hit the enemy on the way. This is also why you cannot shoot around corners, though the characters do lean over the corners in deadlock, which is nice and since no matter the range the bullets will always travel from the left to the right which means that the game will be more forgiving if you're aiming anywhere on the right side of your target the closer that they are the more forgiving it will end up being the farther you aim to the right knowing about this mechanic is important since it lets you understand how your shots actually work on a game engine level which lets you calculate and line them up accordingly when i learned about this in marvel rivals my accuracy must have shot up by an incredible amount even though i hadn't done any actual work or practice just knowing where the bolts are going makes a massive difference it is also worth keeping in mind that almost no heroes in deadlock actually have hit scan bullets which is when the shots immediately go where your aim is pointing they instead are projectiles which means you need to lead your shot ahead of your target depending on distance move speed and the bullets velocity assuming the target is moving we are also going to cover how to get better at that later in the video as well something else you need to do is to make sure that your frame rates are consistent and that they are as close to your monitor's refresh rate as possible. The higher and the more stable your frames are, the more responsive the game will be, which leads to better aim. If you guys want the settings video as well, just let me know in the comments and I might dive into it later. But anyways, now that all these disclaimers and all this extra information is out of the way, let's actually talk about how you can train your aim and start hitting beams. Aim training works. It's a concept that I've covered many times on this channel, and it still works. It still works the same. Obviously, this is 3D aiming, so we're gonna have to approach it slightly differently, but the gist of it is the same. First off, we of course have my favorite, training your eye tracking. By sitting down like you normally would do in game and then pulling up a eye training exercise with you then trying to follow the dot with your eyes to the best of your ability, this will allow you to lock in either as a warm up or even become much better at reading your targets in real time. I have been doing these exercises on and off for a video that I was working on and I can guarantee you with data that it actually works for some people. There's plenty of high rated aim labs grinders that use these eye training exercises regularly to warm up and lock in. It is especially works if your weak point when gaming or shooting is keeping your eyes on the target. Eventually, as you train it or become more used to tracking your target, you're not going to need to train the skill as much, but I've found that returning to it every once in a while helps keep the skill fresh. A full routine takes a few minutes to do, and we actually developed a tool for this over at itrainer.gg. It features the eye exercises that I've featured in a few different previous videos of mine, but in the same frame rate as the viewer's setup, up to, I believe, 560 frames frames per second or more. It has dark mode and ability to turn off the guiding lines if you don't want them, and so much more. Making a habit of using these exercises before you train your aim or even hop in the game will make a massive difference to your aim and your performance. But that's just the beginning. So what do you do afterwards? What do you do after you've practiced your eye tracking? Once you've started going down the aim training path, then it's time to actually start doing some work and start working on your hand to eye coordination, which is going to be the biggest skill that you can improve. Typically, I I would just recommend a Voltaic playlist in Aim Labs and would take it from there. But in the case of third person aiming, like in Deadlock, there are 
way less options for actually training your aim. There's maybe thousands of playlists and scenarios for first person shooters, but there's maybe like less than 100 scenarios that actually let you use third person aiming. So we had to do some drastic measures. What I ended up doing is getting aim labs and then looking into Fortnite aim training. The options here are as I said, also very limited because they do most of their M training in their own game, in custom games. And overall, there's a little over 200 playlists, but most of them aren't good enough. So I ended up putting together my own one, which goes by the name of Otter Deadlock. I'm going to show you guys the playlist briefly, but keep in mind that I'm going to make a lot of adjustments to it over time as I get better at actually editing these playlists overall. We're going to cover the routine a little bit, but first there are a few things that you need to do to ensure that your training will translate to Deadlock as well as possible. First, go into your settings, and make sure that your crosshair looks more or less the same as it does in Deadlock. Secondly, make sure that you have the same settings, the same refresh rate and whatnot to emulate the same feel. Third, go into controls, set the game profile to Fortnite, and then go down to Hipfire, Field of View, and set the FOV to 75. This is about the closest I could find to the Deadlock Field of View, and if you check the console in-game, that is actually the value that Valve gives you in-game as well. After that, you need to make sure that you have more or less the same sensitivity in Deadlock and in aim lapse. And since we don't have a reliable converter at this moment, what I normally do is put myself in the firing range and then hop into an aim lapse map. And by the way, press V to actually go into third person and then making a large swipe all the way from the left side of my mouse pad all the way to the right side. I then do the same thing inside of deadlock. If the sensitivity is faster in aim labs, then I lower it. And if it's slower than in deadlock, I raise it until there isn't that much of a difference. And while it's not one to one, there will be some things that we can do after the aim labs routine to optimize the amount of practice that we actually get from the session. It's also worth mentioning that while third person aim labs does seem to have the sensitivity and feel down, it doesn't seem to actually draw a projectile from your player to the crosshair and shots appear to still come from the middle of the screen or where your crosshair is pointing instead. So as you do these exercises, then you need to aim right at your target. So let's go over how you can get the most out of every scenario in my playlist. Again, press V to actually go for a person inside of aim labs. And again, this is a quick playlist I threw together. It's called Otter's Deadlock. I'm going to keep developing it and release more advanced ones down the line. But anyways, here's how you run it. First, you're going to play spider shot for spider shot. Mentally draw a line between your crosshair and the target that you want to hit. Try following this figurative line with your aim in as perfect of a line as possible and try not to overshoot. Just use the exact amount of of energy to move your mouse to your target that you need. Micro shot follows the same logic, just on a smaller scale, as does reflex shot. Hit your target, wait for the next one to appear, and draw those lines and just follow them. Try not to force it. One of the many keys to aim training is staying relaxed as you do it, because if you tense up, you won't get results and you won't learn. Now, motion shot is a bit different since the target now starts moving after the first shot. We're not going for high scores here. We're going for improvement. So what you should do is click the static target and inflict the moving one and then keep tracking it for a little moment before you are absolutely sure that you have a guaranteed hit, at which point feel free to click it. Multi-shot is a bit stressful at first, but it follows the same logic as any other static targets. Try to shoot the targets as they appear, always going for the largest one. Try to keep a cool head and focus on the lines between the targets. Microflex is another flick static target exercise. Try to draw those lines, but you'll have to be faster here if you want to hit anything. As for sniper shot, it works the same as motion shot. Just hit the static target, flick to the moving one, and now you just track it for a little bit before securing. This one is obviously a bit smaller, so a bit harder to do. Strafe track switches it up once again. Now you need to keep your crosshair on the target as it strafes to the left and to the right. Try to keep your aim smooth in the direction that the ball is going and only turn as soon as you realize that the ball has changed direction. Circle track works the same, but on a larger scale. Switch track is like strafe track, but now as you can see, there are a ton of different targets. Keep your aim on the target and then do a straight line to the next ball and then track that one and then follow the direction that ball is going until it's run out of health or turned around and then jump to the next one, rinse and repeat. Strafe bot is a combination of most of these routines. You can choose to strafe, but I think it's better to make a habit of standing still during the training because you're going to learn how to incorporate movement into deadlock later on. And the movement in aim labs is not one to one with the movement in deadlock. You would just be doing yourself a disservice making a habit of strafing in here. Sphere track is another tracking exercise. Try to keep your target on the ball and try to avoid tensing up while doing so. Motion track probably looks familiar. 
just click the ball, draw a line between your target and the moving ball, and then track it for the entire duration until it runs out of health. I've been doing this specific routine for maybe about a week or so, and have already started seeing some pretty good results after the first run. So trust me, it definitely helps. If it works for you, you can always let others in the comments know so they know that they can trust the advice as well. I'm also currently looking into a way to create my own playlists with some other good tasks that are more suitable for deadlock that might be a bit harder or more challenging, since while I do believe that this playlist is good, the targets are a little bit too big, a little bit too slow for my liking, and most tasks that I do want to do that already exist in Aimlabs don't have a third person mode, which is the whole point of us doing this. And while I have some specific ideas of what I want in a playlist, I still think that this one will serve more than 99% of gamers out there, especially if you come from a MOBA and you don't have any aim skill. I am going to release another video once it's up and you are free to subscribe not to miss that. But now you're done with the aim labs routine. What is next? Of course, we're going to need to take this in game. Since deadlock doesn't really have any recoil or anything that we need to worry about like that, the portion of translating your aim in game is going to be pretty straightforward, especially if the difference between your sensitivities inside of your aim trainer and deadlock is small. What I do is boot up a sandbox and then start off by flicking between the heads of two bots. You might notice that I'm repeating the same mental motion or whatever of drawing lines between them. Once I feel that my shots are going where I want them to go, then I start incorporating some movement, since we obviously won't be standing still when fighting, or at least I would hope so. <laughs> if I'm struggling with keeping my aim on target when I am moving around, then I get close to a bot and just keep my aim locked on their head, all while strafing around and doing my best to keep my aim on them the entire time. I switch between a few ranges before I feel comfortable and then return to the previous warm-up. Doing these, what I like to call translation exercises, make a huge difference in how long it takes for you to translate what you've learned in aim labs and then start applying it to deadlock. You can skip this part, but if you skip these and jump straight in game, you might notice that it takes one or maybe two games before you actually start hitting your shots. And honestly, I don't know if you get the full extent of the training you've done or just some of it. I also like to go to this bot in the sandbox as well and just try to keep my aim on that target as he's strafing and then eventually I start doing the same as I start moving around. I want to feel comfortable inside of the game's engine so I can apply the aiming skills that I just learned and this is the best way to do it. While in the sandbox you can also train last hitting souls at this fountain, just aim at the middle and then either flick or draw lines to follow the souls. You can also just shoot the bots on the other side as well. You can and should take a additional time here in the sandbox to practice the gun feel of whatever heroes that you do play as different bullet velocities require you to lead your shots differently. Practice tracking the dummy from several different ranges, practice with the high velocity magazine, and hell, practice hitting the souls as well to ensure that you can lead your shots over all ranges. These are of course skills that you will pick up as you're playing the game, but by isolating them and practicing them independently, you'll be able to focus on building these skills themselves without having to worry about position movement, cooldowns, macro, micro, all these different things. And you'll find that by eliminating all of these distractions, you're going to see exponential results. I really hope that this guide helps you out and stay tuned for future ones. Thanks for watching. Peace out.